Okay, changed angle because it all looked a little bit weird. Um, if you're a little bit too close for comfort now, then I guess I'm just sorry and you're just gonna have to deal with it because I have now changed this five times and it's, it's the tripod is not working with me today, it's working against me and as much as we've discussed working together, it's not really having it. So, <sighs> very long and rambling intro over. Welcome to this video. Uh, today we are doing an unboxing and I am unboxing the Abominable Book Club Book Box December Edition. I would like to start by promising that I do actually do other videos and I have lots of them planned. I just keep getting incredibly busy and then months just completely fly by and I have no idea where I am anymore. And that's essentially 2022 and I haven't done a different video in, in a really long time. <laughs> Abominable Book Club Book Box. Uh, you know the drill by now. I get this box once a month. If you sign up to the box, you get it once a month, unless you want to delay it by a month because you don't read anything on your TBR, which I ought to do, but I haven't done because I keep forgetting, so I have this box once a month. <laughs> um, inside this box, depending on what package you go for, um, I go for the Four Guts one because I'm greedy, therefore you get a snack, you get hot drinks, you get a new novel release, you get uh, second hand wrapped up in really fancy paper, which is always fun, you get uh, sometimes a sticker, sometimes a pin, sometimes a key ring. You get so much good stuff. Um, the guys over at Abominable have such good attention to detail. So yeah, let's just get into it. To start off with, actually, before I get into this, um, I just want to show you some of the branding on the box without showing you my address. Um, so yeah, I don't know how much you can see that. It's very cool. The box has been properly designed. Just got some really cool little details going on. This is the box. Uh, Let's tuck in. Okay, first things first, because it's right on the top and I cannot miss it, is the snack. And as proof, I haven't eaten it yet. <laughs> um, this is some ooh, caramelized sesame peanuts um, from a brand called Cambrook. Extraordinary nuts. I, I shan't question how extraordinary your nuts are, but these look really good um, and they won't last very long. Next up is the drink. Um, so normally you get a little like little stripy pouch situation, paper bag of some tea bags and uh, coffees and things. Um, but this time round, you have something that I'm very excited about. Um, my potentially two favorite things about the festive season. One, mulled things, like mulled wine and mulled cider and mulled spiced things and hot chocolate. This is both of those together. So I am very excited. This looks very good. Uh, so this is Mulled Spice Luxury Flake Drinking Chocolate. This sounds good and again, probably won't last very long. Then we have the second hand book, which I'm going to open last and not forget to open this time like I did last time. I'm gonna leave it on my lap so I can't possibly forget it. Oh, I've got a couple of bookmarks. So this is the Spookmark, uh, Spookmark 3 Series 4. And it's got some nice little festive snowflakes on there, which we like. These always have a short story on the back which is very fun. And this one reads, Grant's ax slammed into the log with a thud, splitting it in two. He added them to the large pile. It was best to be prepared. Grant had no intention of splitting firewood when the Christmas chill truly arrived. He made it through six more logs before something strange coming from the tree line drew his attention. It was the voice of a woman singing beautifully. It was the ethereal and warm. His mind swam in its harmony. Suddenly he was at the tree line listening, fresh tears cold on his cheeks. A sprig of mistletoe emerged from the darkness, its dangling white berries glowing with a ghostly light. Grant found himself idling towards them, desperate to use their light to glimpse the owner of that voice, to perhaps steal a kiss beneath the mistletoe. A noise, shrill and familiar, rang out across the chill air. The mistletoe withdrew into the darkness like a tongue pulled back inside a mouth, taking with it the song and its unseen singer. Get away from there, his wife, breathless, took him by the arm and led, home, led him home. He never told her what he saw and he never forgot that voice. But nor did he forget the terrible thing illuminated briefly in the dark, or the chittering sound it made when it retreated. Eww. These are always lots of fun. I very much enjoyed the red herring at the beginning there. I think I thought he uh, may have been cutting something up that wasn't firewood. So, nicely done. And we also have a bitter holiday edition bookmark, which has some really, really cool illustrations on it. Then <gasps> mm. have an incredibly large sticker, which will grace my laptop. And another sticker. This is from, I can't remember exactly what this was called, but I think I might try and dig it out because I've kept all of the bookmarks from the past year. But I think that this one was from maybe last year's festive box. It had like a Welsh folk tale or something on it. And I think that this creature is from that folk tale. It's very cool. It's got like proper 
kind of midsummer vibes with the that pretty flowers. Very awesome. Will also be on my laptop. Then have a card. <laughs> uh, unsure. Ah, uh, this is cute. It's a Christmas card, and it has a a tarot. Way is that from? Oh, I think I know what this is from. Um, I might be totally off here, but this is a Christmas card made by the guys at Abominable, and it has this joyous creature on the front of it, covered in in fairy lights, which seems fitting. And I might be too totally off. Uh, I might just be imagining it because this film we watched it. A like a couple of months ago and it truly scarred me um, but there is a British horror film called The Ritual and I swear this is the monstery Loki god thing from that film and if it isn't then I'm just seeing it there because I hated that film I, I loved that film but I hated that film um, it really is giving me that that vibe and I don't like it I don't like it but I do like it uh, we hope your Christmas and New Year are full of ghouls and glee much love Gavin, Owen and brother in Manas <laughs> love that First Christmas card this year. And um, we have the novel. This is really pretty. Ooh, this looks different. This is called The Cottingley Cuckoo. Cuckoo, cuckoo, oh, I don't know, man. Um, and it's by A.J. Elwood. Uh, it's given me more like fantasy vibes from the cover, which is cool. It's not something I tend to read. Uh, so let's read the blurb quickly. Now, captivated by books and stories, Rose dreams of a life away from the confines of the sunny side care home she works in until elderly resident Charlotte Favel offers an unexpected glimpse of enchantment. She keeps an aged stack of letters about the Cottingley fairies, the photographs made famous by Arthur Conan Doyle, but later dismissed as a hoax. The letters insist there is proof that the fairies existed. Rose is eager to learn more, but Charlotte allows her to read only a piece at a time, drawing Rose into her web. As the letter's content grows more menacing, Rose discovers she is unexpectedly pregnant and feels another door to the future has slammed. Her obsession with what really happened in Cottingley all those years ago spirals. As inexplicable events occur inside her home, she begins to entertain dark thoughts about her baby and its origins. Okay, I'm hooked. Um, reason one, at uni, a horribly long time ago, um, I did a couple of units uh, in, no, not in the occult, I didn't join a cult or then, you know, study witchcraft, um, but I, I studied history, um, so we did some, some stuff, uh, and Arthur Conan Doyle came up a lot, so this is really, really interesting, I'm really interested to read this. This doesn't feel like the sort of thing I would have picked up, so I'm quite happy about that. Uh, yeah, I'll keep you posted. Oh, oh, uh, okay. Ah. So there's another book in here, which is very, very full of these bits of paper, which are now all over my floor. Oh, this looks cool. Okay, so, because I didn't put two and two together a second ago, the other bookmark that came is this, this fella, um, with this really cool illustration on it. Uh, and it's got a little quote, spindly needles of teeth splayed out from its gums. The thing's mouth seemed impossibly large, splitting its entire body as it gaped open. Yum, yum. Um, and obviously, it's to do with this book, uh, which is the second book. I don't know how well you can... Can you see it? I'm sure you can. Yeah. Uh, this is Bitter Chills, a holiday edition. It is weighty. Okay. So, Bitter Chills Anthology, 2021 holiday special. It's a pleasure for us to work with Blood Rights Publishing on bringing you their new updated holiday edition of Bitter Chills, which includes extra content, bonus stories, author notes, and full-page illustrations. These hardcore Yuletide horror stories from a selection box of indie talent are the perfect addition to your holiday reading. Don't avoid yellow snow this year, it's the red snow you should be worried about. Very cool. This looks really, really fun. Um, this looks really cool. And some of these, yeah, some of these illustrations look really cool. This feels like quite a good one to read over Christmas, actually, because I always have these grand ideas of reading absolutely loads over the festive season. Um, and I either end up falling asleep because I'm so full of food or you end up just socializing loads and not getting to read as much as you might want to so actually the short story anthology probably quite clever also the cover art on this thing is really cool though very shiny but very cool last thing in this box and I'm not going to forget this time is the secondhand book uh let's see if I can actually manage to get into it this time Yeah, <laughs> this is bound to happen. You can't, you can't sign up to a horror book club subscription book box and loudly claim you dislike James Herbert and then not expect to get James Herbert in almost every single box. <laughs> um, that's fine. 
Richard, this is coming to you. Uh, this is The Survivor by James Herbert. I mean, this one doesn't look so bad. I'm enjoying how old it is. It costs $2.75, which is just great. Um, 75p in the UK. 75p? What can you even buy for 75p? Oh, and it's got all like yellow pages. I can't eat. Uh, maybe I'll give it a go. Uh, so this is James Herbert, The Survivor, A Tale of Death and of... Nope, Hannah can't read. A Tale of Death and of an Evil Which Transcends Death. Well... <laughs> David Keller is the survivor, the only person to escape from the flaming wreckage of a 747 jumbo jet. It was an accident whose aftermath leaves a lingering sense of evil and menace in the quiet countryside. Later, strange events begin to occur. A schoolboy is found decapitated on a railway track, a couple fall to their death from a bedroom window, but it seems that the man has already been dead for some time. David Keller sets about retracing the events of the crash and uncovers the truth. A truth almost too shocking to believe. Actually, Richard, you're not getting this one. This actually sounds like I might enjoy it. Hold the phone. I will give this a go. <laughs> okay, that is everything for this month's box. I am, as per usual, covered in little packing peanut things, um, which is just part of the joy. And I'm going to go and make one of these fancy hot chocolates, finally finish House of Leaves, and then tuck into one of these new books because these look really fun. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please do hit that thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I promise that I will make other videos at some point in the very near future. I really, really promise. Um, and yeah, I will see you later with another one. Bye.